The following is brought to you by AgriTrend and the 2012 Farm Forum event. We've just finished listening to a luncheon speaker, Dr. Jack Schultz, who talked to us about plants and plant signaling methods. It was a fascinating chat. Thanks for being with us. My pleasure. And uh, could you just give us a quick overview of the concept that you were talking about with respect to how plants actually speak to each other? Come on. Really? Yeah, I know. Well, I'm not sure I coined the plant talk part, but that's what everybody calls it. But it's not, of course, verbal speaking. It's, it's chemical. Uh, all plants are known to emit various kinds of chemicals when they're wounded or stressed in some other way and that has an effect on surrounding plants. So for example a plant that's attacked by an insect releases odors that travel to nearby plants and help them get prepared for dealing with a subsequent attack. That's one of many 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 examples. So when did this first become something that we realized that plants emitted an odor? How long have you been working on this? Well we first discovered that uh, in the 80s and then there was a period of about 10 years when nobody believed it, uh, like a lot of things. It took a little while to sink in. Uh, but eventually, more and more people did experiments on the same system. We came back to it, too. And uh, today, the, the concept is not only w widely appreciated, uh, it's widely known by the public and is starting to be exploited in agriculture. So it's been about 30 or more years to develop. You gave me, uh, you gave our audience a opportunity to, to see some examples where plants could not only signal through their root systems, and I, I'd like you to talk about that, but then also to adjacent plants by emitting smells that cause the adjacent plants to do certain things. Well, these are essentially hormones, mm -hmm. and the job of a hormone is to turn genes on and off. Uh, the genes have to go on and off when plants are de dealing with stresses. So a, a plant dealing with drought stress is turning genes on and other genes off in order to cope with that. Those genes are regulated by some of the hormones that are being emitted by neighbors. So uh, in a recent set of studies, uh, people have shown that a plant growing next to a drought stressed plant can smell that and becomes more drought resistant. So if we could understand what the uh, odors were, if we had the ability to understand what the odors were, the plants would effectively be signaling to us what some of their stresses were. Right. We uh, Actually, we know what a lot of the signals are. Uh, the chemistry is not that complicated. The problem is that these odors are emitted at such low concentrations that it's really hard to uh, invent a device that can grab them and analyze them in a small small period of time. So uh, there's an awful lot of engineering work going on at the moment, and we're, we're part of that, to try to develop a device that can actually capture those molecules in open air uh, at such low concentrations uh, so we can recognize them and hear the conversation. Your uh, example you gave was the nose of a dog, right. and that the dog has got a very sensitive nose. I like the slide where you had a nose on the front of a tractor, and then the back end was helping the plants recover. That's effectively what you're doing. That's exactly what we're doing, and uh, everyone recognizes the dog's nose as the gold standard here. Uh, as I mentioned, some folks are training dogs to find pests in agricultural fields. So, uh, yeah, and it's been amazingly difficult, despite lots and lots of effort in many years, to come up with something that can even come close to the dog's nose. I think what's going to happen is that uh, we'll probably acquire that good a sensitivity with a few molecules, but not everything. Can you give us, in closing, a couple examples that would stretch our brains? You mentioned about how plant signaling technology or plant signaling can be used in homeland security. That's still a stretch for me to understand. How, how, how are you going to use that? Well, so far, everything that anyone has ever done to a plant results in the production of a, a fingerprint volatile bouquet, if you will. So you can tell what the plant has experienced if you can smell it. Uh, that includes exposure to microbes. In fact, we did some experiments with a uh, bacterium closely related to anthrax and found that plants will respond to that bacterium, anthrax's closest relative, mm -hmm. by producing a novel set of odors that we can detect and therefore we can use that plant to tell us when that bacterium is in the air or on its surface. So effectively the plant could tell you when anthrax was present in the environment. Wow. Right. Well that's fantastic. This has been just a, such an interesting topic about the power within the plant. Yep. Thanks for thanks for joining us. Thanks for having up. me. It's been a great pleasure. It's been a show me state. It is. <laughs> there you right. go. Thanks, Jack Schultz from the University of Missouri.